Hey guys, it is me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to my team builder for week two against the Memphis Drizzlies and Magic Activator. Now, a couple of points which um, I picked up on from last week. One, I forgot to put the teams in in editing, so what I've done this week is I've gone and screenshotted both our teams, stuck them on the right hand side of the video. One, because it'll help me immensely, because I will forget his team and I will forget team building points. And two, it means I won't have to go back in editing and actually add these things in. This will be something I'll try and remember to do going forward. I remembered it today. I cannot promise that I'll remember it for next week, but there you go. You actually have both the drafts on the screen in front of you. Um, second of all, I am... Uh, this is this is specifically Raikwin here. This is this is calling out Raikwin. Um, I apologise for sneezing in my last video and that you felt it was very unprofessional of me not to edit it out. So I will promise to you that I will not sneeze, and if I do, I will most certainly cut it out just for you. Um, and I've also remembered the screenshots this time, so hopefully you won't be too annoyed while watching my video. So, let's actually get into this, really. Um, don't want to really mope around with it. Up against Magic, who, um, as most of you will know, um, suffered from the hands of Magina, which is completely busted in league format and should not be allowed in this whatsoever. But hey, it's here. I feel so sorry for him because there was literally nothing he could do um, to actually deal with that Magina. Uh, it's a dumb Pokemon, so he lost 5-0 week 1, sorry if I spoiled that for you, but go watch it anyway. Um, so he is definitely going to be out for revenge this week, and I don't look forward to fighting people who have just come off the back of a massive loss, because their mentality will be to get out there and do well, basically. You know, they've got to go out there, get a decent win to get their season on track. Now, obviously we lost as well last week, um, sorry again if I've spoiled something for you there. But it was a very close game to Aberforth, which came down to roles and, you know, potential sets and, and just lack of knowledge of his team at this point. So it was a very close game last week. Um, I think it was the, I say the best loss in, and by that I mean, you know, it was the smallest defeat margin. So we're sitting pretty sort of okay in the league table. I think we're sixth at the moment. So a win this week. One would get me on, like, my first win on the board. I won't have to worry about going un- uh, without winning a game during that the whole, you know, throughout the whole season, um, and two will obviously get us on the right foot to start sort of pushing for playoffs later on. So um, we're up against Magic Activator. Phone shut the hell up. My mum is in Africa at the moment, and she keeps spamming photos of baby elephants and stuff at me. And she's not making me jealous at all. Um, so I've muted that now. Magic's team, as you can see on the side, is disgustingly fat, and I was not looking forward to fighting this thing. Um, he's got Lando, T, Mega Venusaur, Milotic, Arcanine, Jolteon, Kartana, Kamala, Gardevoir, Mien, Shout, Miss Magus, and Armaldo. Interestingly, Armaldo is a Z user, which I find incredibly weird, but the main threat here, obviously, is the Lando T with Z moves, which is also completely busted. Um, I was talking to some guys in the PPL about this because we were talking about how we're going to deal with Z moves going forward, and we just kind of realised there are some things which become completely busted with Zemus, and we, uh, Lando is, is definitely one of them because, you know, it now has an incredibly good flying stab move as well as Earthquake and, and Stone Edge's coverage and, and all that. So, yeah, um, incredibly scary. Let alone the fact his defensive core of Arcanine, Milotic, and Mega Venusaur is horrific um, in terms of taking it down. Thankfully, I've got some things on my team which can take them on, so, you know, I don't feel too bad, but, you know, on paper, and for lots of people, they'll think that is utterly disgusting. They've got Speed and Jolteon and Kartana. Kartana is just ridiculous, I've used that in PPR myself, and a bad player like me can do well with it, you know, it's 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 a mon that's very one-dimensional, but you know what it's going to do, and it does it well, despite you knowing what it's going to do. Um, Jolteon is there for Speed. Um, Kamala's pretty bulky, but can also hit physically very hard, and it's move pool. While not the biggest, has got some really cool moves like Sucker Punch, U-Turn, Earthquake, Play Rough, Wood Hammer. Enough sort of variation to be a real offensive threat. Um, Gardevoir uh, is his fairy type. It's a, another bulky mon but can also hit really hard. Mien Shao, a fast fighting type with two amazing abilities and regenerator. And Reckless, you know, really offensive with high jump kick or, you know, can just be kind of bulky offense pivot with the regenerator. Miss Magius, even, you know, is relatively fast, has the potential to set up nasty plots, um, do some big damage, burn things, you know, Destiny Bond, Disable, it's a really tricky mon, and then Armaldo is pretty much in his draft, just to be a spinner and a rocker, I think, just to take the, 
the ease of having um, well, what's he got? Lando T for rocks. Um, I think I oh know he's got Cartana as a defogger, I, I guess, in very loose terms, and Kamala as a spinner. Um, so he needed another spinner and needed another rocker, so that that's why that's there. So you can see our draft on the team: Mega Lopani, Latias, Clefable, Reggie Steel, Crocodile, Volcarona, Delmai, Skull, Scum Tank, Electivire, Floats, and Staraptor. Um, you can already see the six here briefly on a showdown. I guess we'll go into them uh, in a bit more detail. Just going to give an honourable mention here to uh, my buddy Jock, who did help me team build um, and who did also help me um, just sort of give me ideas on what we can do during the battle. Um, it was a, a really good game, so make sure you do look out for that on Sunday. Um, but we'll go into the team. Um, one set that I want to go over quick that we really, really, really debated bringing uh, until I came up with a really sort of uh, neat idea set. Um, was actually Floatzel, and I know Floatzel hasn't come to the GBA yet, so it could have been like its debut, and we had high hopes for it, but, you know, the fact he's had a, a Venusaur is just kind of off-putting. Otherwise, it deals with a lot of his team quite well, um, which is, is, is nice, but we were going to bring some sort of bulk up the Tom Pass set, but I don't think doing that to, to Magic two weeks in a row would have really been fair. Um, but, you know, um, so shout-out to Floatzel. Just couldn't quite make the cut because we've got some really interesting... Uh, things to, to, to bring this week so we'll go into it first of all we have got Corin the Latias um, basically my only offensive move is still power it kind of runs the risk of the fact that I need to set up for this to work but if you look at his team one he has no dark type two his only resist is Gardevoir um, and three I outspeed a lot of his mons um, other than the Jolteon I actually outspeed everything and Scarf is obviously so if I can get to plus two Bearing in mind he has a lot of things which I can set up a Carmine or a Substitute on, i.e. Mega Venusaur, Milotic if he's got Haze and not a Dragon Tail, uh, potentially the Arcanine depending on its, um, on its set. Again Jolteon if he hasn't got Shadow Ball or Signal Beam for whatever reason, he definitely will, but you know, can set up on that. Kartana just does owl to anything, potentially the Mian Shao depending if it's choiced or not. There's definitely some things in the draft which I can set up on. It's a big ask, but if I can get set up, it will just sweep through his team. Once Gardevoir is gone, Gardevoir is the major threat here now. Obviously, it'll only have Moonblast, it can't hit me with Hyper Voice because it's not Mega, so it can't go through my sub. Substitute is just kind of there to, well, sponge hits and set up on things. It was very close between that and Shadow Ball. In hindsight, Shadow Ball probably wouldn't better because obviously the Gardevoir would not be able to take a Shadow Ball potentially at plus two very well, if at all. Um, and Stored Power would just hit the rest of his team. Um, in the hindsight as well, something like Psychic, I know Stored Power with a combination of Card Mind is ridiculous, but something I could hit harder as well. Coop was also an option, but decided to bring the set mainly because his only resist is Gardevoir, and he has no Dark Types, uh, and his team is all slower other than Jolteon, which is uh, obviously not something that can really deal damage to Latias uh, in great chunks. So. This is the reason behind Latias, real high hopes for this set. It's going to be difficult to set up, but he's definitely got some things which we can use as a setup fodder. Next up is uh, Registeel. If you'd have seen the uh, analysis for week two of the, the kind of like fantasy league, I can't remember what it's called. Is it Pick and Crew? I don't know. It's all like these Americanisms. Um, Registeel is one to look out for. He was expecting me to bring it this week. It's going to be a standout performer. Um, he's right in my mind. You know, I had to bring this thing. It's the only thing that I had to deal with Kartana. Kartana is 100% coming. I can guarantee that because it's such a decent mon uh, against any draft. Its move pool isn't the widest, but it has what it needs. Um, with Truffleberry, Registeel pretty much counters it. Um, I think even a plus two all-out pummeling without the Truffleberry. Um, Registeel lives from full, which is gross, but Truffleberry obviously helps. Helps me switch in. I have got Iron Head, Magnet Rise, Stealth Rock, Hidden Power Fire. Hidden Power Fire is obviously for the Kartana, Iron Head for everything else. Magnet Rise, I can literally wall Lando T if I can get a Magnet Rise up. It'll also help with, uh, if it's like Scarf and, you know, Megalopony comes in. He can't really hit me with anything. If he wants to go for Fly, I can play around that. If he wants to see some Stone Edge, it's not going to do much. And I'll just kill it with an Ice Punch. Um, obviously, my Scum Tank, you can see, will be immune to the Earthquakes as well, which, again, would really help. Um, and, obviously, the Volcarona just avoiding Earthquake damage as well. Um, so, a very sort of cool move. And, obviously, the Stealth Rocks. His team isn't too weak to them, um, but he's got 
uh, a fair amount of sort of initiative. He's got U-turn on Mienchel, U-turn on Kamala, U-turn on Lando, Volt Switch on Jolteon. So some form of hazards will be really useful, and they'll be extremely useful for chipping away at things like Milotic, Arcanine, especially Mega Venusaur, Lando, um, any sort of bulky guard of or Kamala that he brings. And uh, if Mienchel is regenerated, then it's obviously going to keep taking some help away uh, in little bits. So. You know, I felt like it was important to bring all these moves. Uh, I, Magnet Rise was kind of a filler, but then the more I realised it was there, the more useful it would be. Um, so I'm really glad that you know we put it on there. This set was this is like the only wall I really have this week, um, unless you count the Latias there because it was max HP, max speed. Um, so I outspeed the Kartana and just take as many hits as possible. Um, but this is like my only real defensive mon this week. So I guess you could sort of look at this team and see it's quite an offensive team. Um, so that's Reggie Steel. A lot of it, uh, that is sort of my my game plan was hinging on it this week. Sort of defensively, it's got to take hits. Um, it's not got leftovers, and I haven't got any way of recovering it up. So it's got to do the right things at the right time, basically. Next up, we've got the Choice Banded Staraptor because if you look at his draft, you can tell me he has exactly zero switch ins to Brave Bird. Oh, Jack, he has a Jolty on. <laughs> no, cho Choice Band Jolly Staraptor one shots that thing with Brave Bird. Um, I think it's a roll, but with Stealth Fox up, it's like guaranteed. So, yeah, tell me he has a switch in. Lando T still takes over half if he's defensive and intimidates me. Gross. Um, that's why Stealth Fox is useful. Um, and I will outspeed him if he's not scarfing his max defense. So, you know, that's nice. Mega Venusaur dies. Milotic, I think, if it's like defensive with Marvel Scale, still gets two shot. Um, Arcanine after Intimidate. Nope, still doesn't take it after Stealth Fox, or doesn't take two at least. Um, Jolteon, I've already said, Kartana dies, Kamala dies, Gardevoir dies, Mian Chao dies, Miss Mage just dies, Armaldo probably lives, but, you know, can't switch in for sure. So, this thing is my nuke button. Every time I bring this thing in, I'm either going to scare him out and get initiative, or he, something on his team is going to die, without question. I can't run Adamant, I have to run enough speed to outspeed pace 95 Arcanine, just in case he brings offensive Arcanine. Very much wasn't expecting it because it's one of two things. If it brings defensive that and some sort of Lando T set, obviously two intimidate users, um, it covers the ice punch weakness well. I was very much expecting a defensive Arcanine. I can't run the risk though. This thing is so important to me. This game um, uh, dealing with many things. So uh, this Staraptor is literally all I need is U-turn and Brave Bird. Um, quick attack is there for obviously priority, which could be very useful against something like Kartana, which is on low health. If it's Sash, for example, Jolteon. I think Quick Attack does like 50% to Jolteon. So if Jolteon got out of hand, because I don't have many things for Jolteon on my team this week, um, I can always go in and click Quick Attack. Um, Facade was just kind of there in case I get caught by like an odd switch, like, like a, I don't know, a weird Thunder Wave from Gardevoir, or uh, I don't know, any kind of Poison Powder, like, I don't know, we'd bring any Powder move from Venusaur, or um, will Wisp from Arcanine, that kind of thing. Um, Facade was there just so I could still deal massive damage because again, his only switching is Miss Magius or Miss sorry, just Miss Magius, Miss Magius, Miss, Ma Miss Magius, however you want to say it. Um, so uh, you know, if he brings that, then oh well. If he doesn't, then you know, still got Facade, which literally just does everything to his team disgustingly well, hits it so hard. So you know, the the only move, I, the only two moves I really care about are Brave Bird and U-turn this game. Uh, literally. I've with Brave Bird and something dies in his team, which is nice. It's nice to have that option. Um, so that was the reason I bought Staraptor, mainly because obviously Mega Venusaur as well is, is going to be one thing that stops Lopany. Um, Arcanine can kind of check Lopany, but you know, if I'm any kind of setup variant or just high jump kick after rocks twice, I'm pretty sure it still dies. So he needs some kind of backup plan for Lopany. I'm expecting it to be the Venusaur. So um, Staraptor presses his team immensely. Um, as well as it obviously being one of my favourite Pokemon, I just really wanted to do well this season. So, uh, you know, it's really got a really, it's just got an amazing matchup this week. Don't need to be scarfed, I can just be straight power and choice band. And I'm looking forward just to clicking Brave Bird every single time it comes in. Uh, next up, we have got Floppony. I'm pretty sure I changed the, the name. I think I just saw someone call it this, so I was like, yep, I'm calling it Floppony from now on. Um, obviously, this will be Mega in the game, as you can see, it's holding the Loponite. Um, but we've got Return, Ice Punch, Drain Punch, Power Up Punch. Um, looking at his team, I didn't really have any need to bring high jump kick. Uh, he could have bought gravity on Landorus, potentially, to deal with that, so I can't go jumping around everywhere. Um, also he has got a ghost type, so I don't want to be, uh, uh, why am I saying that? Because it's scrappy, it'll hit it anyway, so okay, ignore me. Um, there's a potential for, um, missing, obviously, there's a potential for, 
uh, gravity, and to be honest, not many things on his team really, like, don't really not appreciate fighting. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Drain Punch is there just to recover some health, because I will need that. Um, obviously, Venusaur's going to switch into these fighting moves. I didn't really need High Jump Kick this game. Drain Punch is still enough to, like, hurt the Katana uh, if, if I need to. Um, you know, it'll probably kill Jolteon, because I'm a Lopany, um, and that's Jolteon. You know, Arcanine, if he's Rocky Helmet, it'll give me some health back every time. Again, you know, just give me a little bit of chip damage. Power Up Punch kind of counters the Intimidates, if I predict that. But that could put magic in a real sort of sticky situation. Ice Punch is obviously there for the Lando. That's like the only thing I need it for. Um, it's not going to be doing much to anything else. Ice Punch, you know, if I can avoid the Intimidate somehow, I can just obliterate that thing. So I, I need that move. That was a given. I'm pretty sure he'll know I'll bring that. Um, and return uh, again. He has literally nothing. A Steel Types Kartana, which won't take much, obviously. Um, but otherwise, he has nothing at all, which takes return plus Drain Punch, i.e. Armaldo. Um, so, yeah, Lopini can do a lot of things, but it will need the Arcanine gone. It will need the Venusaur gone. It will need the Lando weakened. Um, potentially the Kartana gone if he's Scarfed of some kind. So. You know, it, it can do things to a lot of his mons, but it, it does need a lot of support, which is why Captain Brave Bird here is going to be so important, because it can take down that Arcanine, it can take down that Venusaur, it can take down that Landorus. Um, so it, it's like a, a late game win condition, I guess. Uh, the, the plan really is at this point, Staraptor nukes things, Lopney cleans up. Red Steel just walls things, and, and you know, if we get the setup chance, then Latias wins. So. Next up, we have got the Volcarona. We are not bringing a setup set of any kind this week. Um, looking at his draft, in hindsight, the uh, Quick Dance set could just literally clean straight through him. But actually, looking at Life Orb Volcarona with Fire Blast, um, it two shots. Don't quote me on this. Max Special de Defense Mega Venusaur. Um, through Thick Fat. It might be. It now sort of now I say that it seems too ridiculous, too good to be true, so I'm gonna say it's max defense. But the combination of Fire Blast and Psychic will take out pretty much any Mega Venusaur spread, um, which is a nice little bit of coverage. Psychic also hits the uh, what's it gonna hit? It's gonna hit the Arcanine hard, um, and the Milotic de decently well. Um, so I've got that, it will hit the Lando T. Um, I mean Fire Blast hits all this team really. Um, fun fact, Fire Blast still does like 40% to uh, defensive Arcanine, so after rocks it can't take two, so if it's, unless it's Flash Fire, you can't switch it in if I have rocks up. Jolteon just dies, Jolteon can't do too much to me unless it's hitting Power Rock. Kartana will outspeed me, but it can't really touch me. Um, I did consider bringing the bulky version of Volcarona, because it's a really good way of dealing with Kartana. Um, like, really good, it can't do much to me at all. Um, and I do have the option to Flame Body as well, and Will-O-Wisp. Um, you know, Kamala will take a hit? Maybe? Gardevoir? Probably won't like switching in anyway. Uh, it's especially defensive, obviously, but, you know, Fire Blast can be doing a huge amount. Mian Shao, again, won't switch in. Miss Magius, again, won't switch in. Normal, though, just won't like anything. So, the, like, the move coverage I have, Giga Drain is literally there for Milotic. But, you know, if I had, like, any kind of setups sort of move instead of Giga Drain, I don't think it would have been the end of the world. Because um, I could still have clicked Psychic. And if I get plus special defense, you know, Milotic can't really do much to me unless it has Haze or Dragon Tail. Um, so, you know, uh, it was a, it was a mix-up. I decided Giga Drain would be the safest. I've got Roost anyway, so I can recover some health. Because um, I feel this thing's quite important. If I can switch this thing on, like a Jolteon, for example, um, he can't kill me after rocks. Uh, and I don't even know if Specs will kill me. Potentially Specs Thunderbolt might kill me, obviously. But, um, you know, I can switch into something like Venusaur, scare it out. Because, like I said, Fire Blast does a metric F-ton. Um, and Psychic is always an option too, so he literally again has no switch-ins. It's kind of like the, the, the special offensive side of Staraptor. Um, it just nuke things and he doesn't have switch-ins, bar Milotic maybe. Um, so yeah, th that was the main reason I bought this. Again, I just needed to run enough speed to actually outspeed an offensive Arcanine. That's that's pretty much all I have for this Volcarona. Um, just, just to hit hard, the same as Staraptor, and then just have Lopany or the Latias clean up late game. Now, the final thing, uh, something Shardy will be very proud of, I have no doubt, uh, is Scum Tank. Now, Scum Tank ran a really cool set. Spoilers, it does actually work as intended in the game, you will see. Um, but, uh, we have Dark Pulse, Toxic, Taunt, and Defog. 
It looks very weird on paper, I'll give you that. Definitely not something you'll see in standard play, but this is not standard play. You counter team in league play, and this set closes down all of his walls, all of his fire water grass core, uh, and potentially the Gardevoir uh, to a certain extent. Um, I have sped crept uh, here, 92 speed EVs, is enough to outspeed and uh, a 4 EV invested Arcanine, I believe. If not, it should have been, but never mind. Um, it's enough to outspeed an uninvested Arcanine, basically, because I was expecting him to bring max HP, max defense, or max special defense, and maybe the rest in the other defense or attack. So, um, it's enough to outspeed that, and if I've got that, it's going to outspeed a Milo Tick, and it's going to outspeed a Mega Venusaur. It's also going to outspeed uh, Gardevoir, and I'm assuming these are all uninvested, obviously. So, why have I done that? Well, uh, Scum Tank is a relatively fast taunt user. Let's just go over his team. Mega Venusaur, his recovery is, is either Giga Drain, which will do nothing to Scum Tank, Leech Seed, which we don't want Leech Seed, and Synthesis. You know? um, Milo Tick, Recover, is his only form of recovery outside of Leftovers. Arcanine, Morning Sun, if I catch that thing on a switch enough to Stealth Rocks. He's got to switch out or take Dark Pulse uh, and, and won't be able to take another Stealth Rocks, which is excellent. Um, and potentially Gardevoir will stop it from doing Thunder Wave, Shenanigans, uh, Wishing, uh, any other kind of you know special move. It'll even work on Miss Mages. So, this thing has like, it's kind of like a way of taking down one wall, guaranteed, um, as long as I keep it healthy. He, like I said, he has no Dark Resist. Like, uh, sorry, he has no dark type, he has no dark resist at all on his whole entire draft. Um, which is very dangerous in league format these days with knockoff. Um, it even hits like the Gardevoir neutrally now. Whilst Gun Tank obviously has only got base 71, I am modest, uh, as you can see, because I didn't really need like any defense kind of investment. A massive HP is enough for me to bulk out his walls, like Milo Tick, Arcanine, Venusaur. I can just sit there, toxic and Arcanine, toxic and Milo Tick, toxic and Gardevoir. He can't synchronize me because I'm a poison type. I can stop it from healing up. If he wants to switch out, great. He's taking Stealth Rocks damage. I'll just Toxic the next thing. Um, you know, I can taunt them to stop them from healing, so they're just going to keep taking Stealth Rocks damage. They're going to keep taking Toxic damage. They're going to keep taking Dark Pulse damage. All while this is happening, I'm regaining some Black Sludge. Obviously, they're going to be doing some damage to me in the meantime, but I will tank that. If, he take me down, if they take me down, so what? Aftermath, free 25% extra damage there. If it's a wall, excellent. That's something less I have to worry about. I can bring in something like my powerhouse in uh, the Raptor. I can bring something in like Lopini. I can bring something in like the Volcarona just to, to break things. Um, basically, this thing just beats all his walls 1v1. Uh, unless the... Uh, unless the... Da -da 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 -da, the Arcanine is like offensive. Um, or the Venusaur has Earthquake. That's literally like the only way his walls could potentially be. Um, I think Dark Pulse does like 40% to uninvested, especially defensive Venusaur. I could be making that up. Um, but obviously, if I get some prior damage off, predict it synthesis, and he's on half health, I can just sit there, click Dark Pulse, and win. Unless he has Earthquake. And I'm not expecting him to bring Earthquake, really, because I have got um, two immunities in Latias. He doesn't want to give me a free switch into Latias when he's got the Venusaur in. I'm definitely expecting Knock Off, if anything, over Earthquake. Um, he doesn't want to give me a free switch into the Staraptor, so I'm not really expecting him to bring the Earthquake. Um, Dark Pulse, again, just does decent damage to the rest of his team. Lando will still do like half. Uh, Kartana doesn't like it at all, because Kartana is frail on the specially defensive side and its HP stat is tiny. Um, Jolteon, you know, will just take decent damage still. Jolteon can't do too much to me. Um, Kamala uh, w won't, well, Kamala's like his, I guess, his best answer to this, but again, it can't sit there and uh, wish because I can taunt. Um, you know, Mian Chao is probably one of his better switchings. Miss Mages will lose to me 1v1. Armaldo probably wouldn't like it either. So, you know, this was the thing I bought in over the Sneasel. Uh, and to me, in my head, as long as I can get it in against the wall, it beats one of his walls. It beats Milotic, it beats Arcanine, it beats Mega Venusaur, it beats Gardevoir. If I can just take any of one of them four down with this thing, I will be happy. That will be Scum Tank's job done. So, that's actually the team. Um, I realise I've rambled on longer than I did last week, even with the help of the things on the side here. Um, sorry if I didn't go over some of the EV spreads. I feel like Scun Tang is pretty much like the only one I'd have to explain. The rest are all just pretty, you know, self-explanatory speed creeping as you do in leagues, um, and 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 just sort of seem like optimal sets really. So make sure you guys do check out the links to uh, Magic Activator below. Make sure you check out the links to the, the GBA things. Make sure you subscribe so you can see the game tomorrow. Um, I will still have to agree time with Magic to upload it, but we'll see what we can do. But it will definitely be up to, uh, tomorrow. 
It's weird me saying tomorrow because today's Friday, so it'll be Sunday it goes up. And this will obviously be up tomorrow. If you guys have any sort of comments about the team, what you think of it, how you think we're going to get on, please make sure you leave uh, a comment below because I honestly prefer comments to likes and stuff. It makes me feel like you're interacting with me more. So if you want to give me a warm, fuzzy feeling, leave me a comment, even if it's a hate comment like Jack, you suck. Much appreciated. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Make sure you, you do leave a like, leave a comment, check out Magic, check out the GBA. Make sure you check out the game tomorrow, and uh, I will see you later. Bye.